Yeah. This is crazy what's going on down here. This is everything I grow I grew up believing America to be. It, it just it ain't. It ain't. This place did ruin this for the next ten or fifteen years. I can't even get them online. Because BP don't want me there. You know, I always thought all my life I get killed by the Russians. You know, growing up, you know, the Russians with a big bomb. I never thought I'd get attacked by the British. Yeah, we don't have our boat in the water. We picked it up because we was getting in so much trouble. They almost arrested us with Anderson Cooper on the boat. Wouldn't let us film. Right. Held us up until the rain came and then they finally I had to call the mayor, the mayor called the governor, and the governor called the head of the Coast Guard before they let us, they released us. And I thought Anderson Cooper was going to start crying out there. Well, a lot of this marsh is, uh, like I said before, it's really rich in seafood all ty of all types and it's used by everybody, uh, commercial, sports, recreational, fishermen, uh, it's used by everybody, it's, it's a real uh, rich environment. Uh, pretty much every species of saltwater fish there is, at one time or another, is in these little estuary type waters, you know, shallow waters. Uh, as far as mammals, you're going to have raccoons, muskrats, otters, uh, the birds, you have your pelicans, seagulls, herons, marsh hens, uh, even little sparrow birds and stuff. Uh, it's just so full of everything over here. It's, everything can exist in this area. It's, it's, it's really rich in everything to survive. What you've seen thus far on the way out here is you saw two types of booming operations, two types of boom. Uh, the, brightly, the brightly colored stuff, the orange and the yellow stuff, that's called containment boom. And that's designed uh, to trap oil, to prevent oil from getting into the marsh. And that's been lined up, uh, you know, it's either passes in case more oil comes in. It's kind of a precautionary measure. Uh, the white stuff, the long the stuff that looks like a long cotton snake, uh, that's what's called absorbent boom. And that's designed to trap oil um, and actually kind of uh, capture it and hold on to it uh, to prevent it from getting in the marsh as well. Uh, in some cases, when you have these, these strong afternoon thunderstorms uh, that, you know, the wind picks up and it creates a little bit of chop, or if you have a very strong current, a very strong tide, sometimes that unfortunately pushes the oil over the absorbent boom. The containment boom does a little bit job, better job of containing that kind of stuff. We liked living in Grand Isle because it was a place, a quiet little place we call home. Um, since the oil spill, that's all changed. Um, if you ask me if I'll take a hurricane any day over an oil spill, I think I'm willing to bet on a hurricane. At least that's not a long-term process. You know, it rolls in and it rolls out. We assess the damage and we see what we have to work with or what we don't have to work with. Um, at least I'm insured for a hurricane and um, nobody's called me and told me that I'm insured for an oil spill. Uh, but you would think that BP would have wanted to come into our little town and, and give us the, um, the business. But instead they brought a lot of catering companies that weren't from our little town and they gave them the business. Um, so people that weren't maybe affected by the oil spill, you know, like we were. People that weren't affected by the oil industry being cut off completely too. Um, that kind of thing. Uh, just doesn't seem kind of American to me. You know, we're here, we're trying to make a living. BP's going to pay either on the front end or they're going to pay on the back end, one way or the other. Hopefully, hopefully I will be here tomorrow. Yeah. Some people tell us two years. That's, that's what we're trying to we're trying to help them out, you know, and get that community back like it was. Get back up to par and get it back on track. You know, try to do my part. It's a it's a lot of work to be done out there. But today we say we're gonna take us a walk on the beach and see how pretty it looks, and it's very beautiful. They treating us right. We got one oyster lease with over hundred years in my family. One oyster bed, over hundred years. Those part of those oyster beds we got there, I think that's finished for my lifetime. I don't think we'll be fishing oysters back there. And I don't know what will happen because I don't want to leave all Grand Isle. Grand Isle for me is just like really next to heaven mm -hmm. to me over here. That's what it was before. 
and when you get up in the morning you could almost swear you see some little angels and now when we get up in the morning it's different we see some red feature and we think it's the devil then we start thinking i think it's bp we see in there we're going to rebuild we some survive but this there if it comes to the land for a hurricane now we don't know we cannot clean that you know we could rebuild how i built my own house when we build that me and another troll built that house when i built it you know years ago we do things ourselves like the land gonna come to the hall on the ground and we got it all over that's something that we can't do that's why I would say, Cajun people's tough. They could survive when a lot of other people can't survive. <laughs> they are all alive, I'm staying on right now. <laughs>